Hello, hello, this is Josh from Painting by Josh. In this video, I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown on how I like to spray out my aluminium sliding door frames and doors. So, in this video, I will go into a bit more comprehensive detail of, you know, the way I like to tape it up, if I do or do not tape up the rubber seals, just the whole process, anything that I miss out on my last videos, because I have got an aluminium window video up and I don't mind not that long ago on pretty much the same thing but I didn't go pulling out the sliding doors or anything like that so I got a lot of questions on that also so I'll fill all that information in and hopefully um, get this one 100% for all you beautiful peeps out there. Thanks as always watching, jump on and subscribe and give us a big thumbs up yo. Alright so what I've done at the moment I have not got the best um, lighting in here, so I do apologize, people. But as you can see what I've done, I've gone through, I've used the iEquip 36 millimeter um, Envo tape, and I'm using the iEquip masking uh, paper also on this one. What I've done, flip this out, we are getting a bit of wind. Look at this absolutely beautiful view that I've got while I'm doing this. So we're only doing the inside or the outside is the same color as the inside at the moment but we're switching all over to white so what i've done as well i have on this one taped up the seals as you can see i've completely taped them up you have got it that inside lip there so you just want to overlap your tape a bit over onto this edge and then you can push it in between so you're completely covering the rubber seals so, a lot of the time I get the question, hey, do I or do I not paint the rubber seal? Any interior rubber seals, I never usually paint. I only usually paint them if they're old, faded, cracked, and really dry. So a lot of the time, if they're outside in the sun, that's the reason why I paint them. So yeah, my, my answer is if they're in bad condition, doesn't matter if they are inside or outside, I will um, go through and paint the rubber so just tape up the glass and do the exact same process as what you do your aluminium frames and hit the rubber as just as you go but if not tape up your rubber like i did on these ones like i said taped up the rubber the whole way around up on the top down and then what we're doing as well like i said we're only doing the outs uh, the inside so I just tape up this edge you don't want to roll it right around onto that next side you want to make a nice straight line across this edge here and that way you're going to get a nice straight line without demasking any of the paintwork um, from the face as well so my process usually is I come in I take off any of the doors so I've just lifted these doors off usually come straight onto the outside and you can just lift your doors straight off your tracks and then that way you can stack them somewhere place them somewhere and yeah you can do it exactly like this because what happens if you don't take out your doors this back edge on both sides once you slide it past the fixed panel you will see it if you have your doors opened you will see the original color which is this edge here through the glass so you always want to take them off it's the same with the aluminium windows as well same thing go inside take them out they just pretty much just lift all straight out um, and then that way you can tape up your rubber seal this here is your weather strip so the weather strip as well, your tape doesn't really stick the best to it, but as long as it's stuck to it, it's covered it, uh, that's all we really need. The same thing as here, I've covered completely all my, um, all my locks and my door handles, so they're completely covered and I'm not going to miss anything as well. Because it's nothing worse than finishing job, but then you know you can see in between locks and uh, fixtures and everything like that. So yeah, you always want to make sure that you've got everything completely covered. Same as all my strips up the top, um, down on my sides. See that's your weather strip here. It's usually just a bit of um, uh, soft foamy material. 
Um, so in saying that as well, so we'll completely take them up. Same as your, your windows as well. You don't want to, on this one, um, we'll be just taking it to this face here as well. Um, otherwise, it will look silly from the inside. You will be able to see the white. So you always just want to take it to this edge here also. And we have got our plastic um, strips down the side here. Your stringers. Uh, so I've completely taped them up as well. And the top plastic piece. It's, and that way still you can completely still use your window. Slide it up and down. So that definitely works for that. And I have taken off any other locks or anything like that that's screwed on. Just take them off. Makes it a lot easier and a cleaner, cleaner finish. So that's pretty much the process at the moment. I will just jump on a bit later on. Um, I'll probably demask one of these sections to quickly show uh, the way I am going to do it. So that way you can make it easier for you. It is, like I said, it is hard for me to get a good picture of it. As you can see, we've got that strip in here, so that's the rubber. So there is a bit of a lip around as well, so I'll show you how I like to just overlap the, the tape onto this edge, and then what you do when you apply pressure in here, it will fold in um, into that edge and completely cover the, the rubber seal also. So I will quickly set yours up. I'll quickly just demask this section, just so I can that is exactly what I mean. So, you know, even if you're a DIYer and you're going to use, um, you know, you want to go through and you've got a fair few aluminium windows to do or whatever you want to do, invest in a uh, taping dispenser machine. They're definitely um, a, a worth it. Uh, the time you'll save, it will definitely make worth investing in one. We'll make it hard. Alright. So I'm not sure if you can see. But see how I've overlapped it onto that first edge. So then when you apply pressure. See how it's folding. Actually in and behind. Onto the seal. So if you do that the same the whole way down, keep it on that edge, and then you should be able to just slowly and easily just push it in from the back. And then that way you're going to completely cover your seal. See so I've just done it like that, and that way it completely goes in behind covers it up um, and it's an easy efficient way to tape up anything really where you got an edge like that just yeah overlap a little bit and then apply pressure into this corner and uh, that way you should be able to completely cover up everything and the reason why I like to go through first and tape up any of the glass any of the uh, hardware is because when I go to sand I can get right into these edges I don't have to worry about uh, scratching the glass so you're protecting the glass you can get fur further in to the surface uh, with, without having to worry about damage also and what I always like to do as well is how I've done all these ones Exactly the same. This one's the window. I haven't taped up these yet, but these are obviously the screens. So what I'll do, I'll take, unscrew these, uh, and then I'll tape up the fly screen. But in saying that, I, I really need to take out the fly screen on this one, uh, because you have this edge that's through here. So if I just taped it completely up, painted your perimeter, you're going to see that edge from the inside which you don't want so I will take these fly screens out which is pretty easy um, you know just get your blade and take it from one of the corners you can usually see uh, from one of the corners where it starts it hasn't been completely wrapped around so it's been cut here 
and it's been cut there so this is where it's been started so I'll just pull this section out get my blade pull it in there take it out um, and then that way we can completely paint behind it and then once it's dry we can put the screen the fly screen back on I might quickly just give us a bit of a rundown on how I'll do that also well as I said I hope uh, we're all doing well out there being kind to one another that's what's most important I have got my eye equip two-edge knife which does come out to your blade but yeah just grab your grab your corner and then what we can do just, just take it out Definitely making it hard trying to film and do this. So a lot of the time too, if your windows, aluminium windows, screens are in bad condition, um, you know, it might be a good excuse to go to Bunnings, get some new fly screen and, and put it on at the same time if we're going to be doing all this. Um, now a lot of time this screen isn't in the worst condition, but a lot of time if you do have holes or anything in it also, it's a good, good time to... Um, Replace your fly screen too. So there we go. So that way we can get this edge as well, which was which was completely covered, uh, and we can get this edge along here. Uh, we'll take off these. Um, I'll do the same with this one. Tape up your little lock down there, and then yeah, in saying that, we don't even have to um, tape up the screen or anything. Then we can just go straight to it. Um, while I'm here as well usually what I like to use is just your sanding pad we get aka sanding sponge that way it can mold and contour to your surface so like I said when I'm I will have to tap this down but when I'm sanding you can get try to find somewhere that's got a bit better light even down here this might be better so how when I'm sanding you can actually get in um, to all the areas that would be really hard and uh, take a lot of time to try to sand in between all these so having a sponge like this where it actually molds to um, all the edges and the corners makes it a lot easier and you um, are definitely going to make sure you get all your surfaces like this like I said why I, why I do tape up first is because I can just go like this now run along I don't have to worry about um, you know damaging or scratching any of the glass it's just another worry that you don't have to worry about I suppose so yeah so after everything's taped everything's covered up I go through with my sponge like one 180 grit to 240 uh, depending on you know this is in really good condition it's only really a color change but if um, you know there was corrosion around or it started to pit any of the aluminium what I would do I would um, you know use a 120 grit then go up to um, you know a 240 or something like that so you don't want to be scratching into your paintwork you just want to be um, you know deglossing delaminating the surface so you can get proper um, or maximum adhesion 
and what we're using on this one <coughs> we are using the Dulux Duramax Dulux Duramax is an awesome product as well um, you know this can be you can polish this product so after a couple of years and it starts to go a bit dull um, it is long lasting color as well but this is um, a polishable product also so this is what I'm using on this one and my primer coat is the Dulux etch primer so this is what we'll be using to etch prime it all so now after we go through everything taped up everything completely sanded give it all a good dust town like I say it's so important that you make sure if you're sanding down a surface that you got to dust it down um, it's very important otherwise there's no real point sanding if you're not going to dust it because all you're doing is you're going to be getting your dust onto the surface and you're applying your paint over it and you're going to definitely jeopardize the adhesion so you always want to make sure it's 100% and there's always a procedure to do that you never want to skip them um, you know I've had many of comments on other, my other videos saying hey you know I've done what you said but you know it's not sticking too well and I'm like hey did you use a primer and they're like oh no we didn't use a primer because um, you know the people at Bunnings or wherever told us we won't need to and I'm like for what it's worth um, you know the longest process is taping it up you know it doesn't take that long to run over it with an etch primer uh, it's gonna probably or potentially save you a lot of time and money down the track so you always want to yeah follow the right procedure don't cut corners and you will end up with a good result a absolute beautiful result so yeah, give everything a dust down and you know, grab your vacuum even vacuum out any of your tracks after you've dusted it just to get everything out make sure it's a hundred percent dust and um, do it free and then you can start applying your etch primer so what I will do I will start to go through give everything a really good sand Make sure you get right into your corners, make sure you get every um, corner, every edge, you don't want to miss anything. It's always important to sand all of the time before and between coats, but if you get everything 100% the first time, um, you know, there's no real reason why you'll have to sand in between uh, the next coats. You should be right to go as long as you keep it um, the wind down and the dust down you'll be happy just to go straight in make sure you get in and around and behind everything so we'll do that I'll keep going along now sanding all the surfaces and I'll put this back on when I start applying my uh, Dulux metal etch primer all right so all completely sanded now i've gave it all a good dust down the uh, last thing i really need to do is just go through and vacuum between any of the tracks that's the only section that you it's really hard to sometimes uh dust out especially if they're really deep uh, tracks as well so what i like to do i'm using the merca on this one i've got the merca cleanup kit and that's simply just the vacuum really but going through Sucking out any of the corners, get any of that dust or anything out. So the next procedure after giving all the good dust, good vacuum, is to get out the etch primer. So what you want to do, 
want to give it a good shake for you know between 30 to a minute 30 seconds to a minute um, and then every you know every minute in use just give it a big bit of a shake as well they keep that pressure up uh, this is what we're using as I was showing before but yeah just give it a good shake around what I'm going to do because I've got these doors these doors off um, I'm going to concentrate on just getting all this frame completely finished today and then first up tomorrow I can come in and just blow these two out then get onto the rest of the walls I've done all the cabinets on this one um, I've done there was 14 big shutters that all also have been completed off just zoom in there if I can all the shutters so I use the Dulux Sterigard on them after putting on um, the Zinza Extreme Adhesion Primer I pretty much think it is but that's for another day yeah we'll just go through now make sure it's well shaken up what I always do I always start at the top a lot of the time most of the time when whatever you are painting you, you always work your way from the top down uh, that's what we'll be doing but yeah sun and love all the way from Newcastle Australia all the way out to over up to Port Stevens a bit of a scenic view for you all you peeps around the world this is Newcastle Australia Give it a good shake and give it a bit of test yet get, get, it, get it out very similar to what's here um, it's only a it's a light grey so you just want to give it a mist as well you never want to go putting a real thick coat on you just want a nice mist coat you get better adhesion especially on metal um, when it's just a mist coat so it shouldn't it only take half an hour a coat, really. Um, yeah, just make sure if you've got so many edges, you don't want to lose yourself. So make sure you, you know, doing each sort of panel. Maybe bring it down a little bit, then go to the next one, because uh, you don't want to go from here to over here to there. Otherwise, you will lose yourself and you will uh, miss a lot of the surfaces. So yeah, always keep it a nice. Um, sort of even way that you're going to do it and when it starts to fade out like that when you can actually feel the pressure starting to drop just stop and give it a bit of a shake As you can see, that's all it pretty much needs for, for the etch. And the next section, still section by section, that's what I was trying to say. So that's pretty much the procedure of going through and just a light mist etch prime over it all. And that's what we'll be doing, we'll be just going through completing this as you can see how I've gone through, sent it all, dusted it, vacuumed up any and now the etch prime's just going on. 
take this up here and we'll just do a little bit of a section here just so I can show you. It's a bit, a bit better lighting. So you just want to do it nice, even. You don't want to give it a bit of a shake. It's going to start to drop pressure. Well, that's pretty much all you want to do to it. So that's how quick that panel took, what, 20 seconds? Uh, so it is really quick. And for DIY point of view, absolutely perfect. You know, I've done, um, you know, over the years, I wouldn't say hundreds, but close to 100 aluminium doors, frames, windows. Um, and I can guarantee if you follow the process, hey, they're gonna last just as long as what they would out of the factory. So I can guarantee these, um, you know, that are gonna, gonna last. You know, if there's any sandy areas, these, like I said, these aluminium sliders and windows and everything are in really good condition. So, yeah, we didn't do, need to do too much preparation. The longest part is taping up and everything, but if there is corroded or areas that are starting to pit, give it a really good sand, like I said. And even if you have to go over them areas a couple more times, treat that area, uh, that's, what you, that's what you'd do. So anyways, I'm gonna keep on going through. I'm gonna finish priming this one. Um, then I'll, I will prime this one while I'm here for tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, I'll get out the color and we'll start going through. That's the Dulux Duramax. And we'll start um, putting on our top coats. All right, as you can see, I've just started putting on first coat of white. So I'm using the Duramax. You don't want to put it on too heavy, otherwise, you know, it is pretty hard for this stuff to run, but um, it dries really quick as well, but you don't want to go flooding it on. Um, always give the can a good shake. So most like most things that you are painting, you always want to do your inside edges and everything first before you do your face. What I'll do, I'll go, go through and do this inside edge here. Um, you can, you just got to angle your can right. You, you can definitely get it all completely. Um, you just got to make sure that you put the can on the right angle. And then that way, make sure you give your, give your can a bit of a shake every minute or so. Just keep your pressure up. That's well, that's the difference, anyway. As you can see. Like I said, I'm sorry about the light peeps. It isn't the best, but um, you know, when I come over under these sections, it'll be a bit better. I'll do these so I can show you. I do actually just want to get a quick photo, sorry. Really do want to wear a mask as well. Good PPE is very important.
All right, that's the doors first coated. I'll go along. So that's the only one can there. I'll probably get half of this done, like I said. A bit over, yeah, one and a half cans. So one can of etch and one and a half cans of top coat. But I just want to make sure I get all this done and the doors put back up this afternoon. I've probably got about an hour. Uh, but yeah, you see how quick the process is. It's only half an hour per coat, really. And time you come through the whole way, you can start again and do it straight away again. That's a good thing about this as well. It's real fast grind. Cue is really quick as well. But, all right, I'm gonna keep on going through. These are the tips that they come with. They're black. And this is uh, the tips that I change it to. Come out onto this back side as well, just so you can get this back lip the whole way through. We'll finish this face section first, and then we'll, yeah, get another coat on it, yeah? Alright, I'm just going to keep on going through, getting the first coat. Alright, I just applied second coat to the sliding door. As you can see, this is the first coat. See through on this one where this one's absolutely beautiful. It has dried pretty much straight away. But yeah, beautiful satin finish. It seriously just, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a factory finished powder coated door or the ones that I'm doing now. So it definitely works. The next coat you can put on a bit heavier if you like. I said always get shooting the areas first and then come around and then do your face. Face. 
that's just the shadow. I need some actually blue. Yeah. But yeah, I've shot all the way in there, as you can see, even the back of it's completely got. But that's the two doors done now, completely finished. Oh, this has been completely first coated. I only finished first coating this you know, five to ten minutes ago. I wish it was, was here and you just could feel how this actually feels like. It seriously feels like a bit of glass. It's how smooth it actually is, so I'm not sure if you can. Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, so I used two two tins and that was to first coat this whole thing and to two coat uh, the two sliders there. A bit over three and we'll have this completely done. I'm gonna go through now and start applying my second coat. I can start putting it on straight away again. done now that panel I'll go through do the four panels and then I'll drop down and do the two fixed panels and then we can let it dry I've done these ones second coat already so time I finish this these will be completely dried and cured and then I can go popping them back in I can demask and that way we haven't got this opened all night but to in saying that I didn't want any sold air or dew coming in through the night going on my product um, and then I'd have to go through and do the whole thing again as in give it all a good sand wipe down um, just to make sure the the top coat would stick so yeah it's always good to try to finish what you started if you can especially when it comes to aluminium or something like that and you're so close to the beach these are completely dried now absolutely beautiful anyway I'm going to keep on going on and getting this done. Put yours on when I'm just doing the last little section and they will go through and clean it all up and reveal it together. Completely finished two coats and finished all two coats now. But what do I really need to do? I need to get out of here, but I need to get these put back on. So I'm just going to demask around the perimeter. I'm going to leave the glass taped up um, so I can get these put back in. And then tomorrow, once it's completely cured first up in the morning, I'll go through and I'll demask the whole um, the whole job. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but the finish on this is absolutely beautiful. It's like um, like a pre-finished door for a fraction of the price. So I can guarantee, you know, to get this whole set completely taken out and replaced with a different colour, um, you know, that would involve you know, builders, painters, um, and then the supply and to fit of the actual um, casing, uh, you know, it's gonna end up close to $10,000. Um, I know it nearly cost a thousand, uh, couple of thousand dollars just for a double aluminium window. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, um, I mean, definitely pays off if you're gonna achieve the exact same finish. Um, yeah, I'll definitely just go for getting them painted. And here we are, we are all, completely finished off we just got to demask this now i went through yesterday just uh, demasked the perimeter just so i could get the sliders back in all right so what i'm going to do i'm just going to show you how i like to take out the sliding uh door so you can paint that back edge that you will miss if you don't take out the door you will see it from the inside but i'll just show you see this inside edge here you can see it from the glass. If you don't take the glass uh, door out um, and paint this edge, what will happen 
as you'll see it from here. See how it's nicely painted white now? Where before it was the blue color. So you will see it from the inside if you don't take out the door. So I'll just show you how I take out the door. So majority of doors, if you try to take them out while they are closed, well not all the way, but to the area, they won't come out. They're designed so when they are opened, so it's a security thing. If they are closed, they can't lift out. But when they are opened, you can slide it all the way back across and you can pull it out. It's the same as most windows as well. So slide it all the way out. And that way, you should be able to just take out. As you can see, it's really easy, pretty easy to take them out. Uh, so you just gotta slide them across and then you can lift them out from the sides of where the fixed panels are. And then that is the edge there. So I taped up the weather strip and I've sprayed that edge on the inside so you can't see it. So that's what we've done. Now I'll put, the, put it back in it's exactly the same as putting it back in. Um, you have to put it back in from the sides, not from the middle. There you go. So it doesn't take that much to uh, take out your sliding panel. I oh, said so it's the same as with a door or a aluminium window. Exactly the same process. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to leave this mast up. We're going to come down to this section where I've just primed this one up this morning and I've just taken out this, the other th fly screens on these ones because the same thing, the fly screen was covering over this, so I need to take out the fly screens so I can paint this back section here. Um, so I've all taped it up, taped up the weather strips on the side as well, as you can see. I'm using the iQuip Envo 36 millimeter. It's pretty much one of the only tapes I, I do use. So taped up the locks. I've taken off, unscrewed the door handles and we're pretty much right to um, start putting down our, our top coats. One or two top coats. It's pretty much the exact same process as this one here. Uh, when you're doing your window as well, it's exactly the same. So this one will come all the way down. This one will come all the way up. I'm not going to do it now, I'll show you this a bit later on because you've got that back edge behind here as well with this window. So you slide it all the way down, get that back edge and you can slide it back up. That's uh, what we're doing. Like I said, I appreciate you as always watching, following on. Let's give it a good shake. Like I said, always do all your edges first and then do your flats last. So. And that way, you can pick up your faces.
So that's the first coat. And this one, I'll do this one now, and then we'll get on to this frame window and window casement. finish off getting this one and then I'll put yours on and we'll do this one together. We'll go through now and put first coat of uh, the, the white. The standard cap, the cap I like to use, Duramax, it's a, just a wider fan, fat cap. Didn't put it on too heavy first coat, but next coat you just want to make sure you put it on enough so you've got your next coat to cover. But that's where we're at at the moment. So what we're going to do. Right, so the Duramax dries really quick, so I'll go through now, spray out these ones again. And we'll spray out this one, and we'll leave it an hour or so. And then we'll go through and start demasking everything. Fly screens are going to get put back on by the client he's just going to get the new screens that he wanted um, so yeah I'm gonna finish these off demask them then 
the new screens, fly screen can go back in. Really easy process as well. Um, anyone can do it. Just follow a couple of videos if you have to, but it's exactly the same. You just got to make sure that your screen's tight. Start from one direction and just pull it as you go around, keeping the tension nice and tight on and make sure you get no creases. Um, you can get a little tool from Bunnings um, just for the rubber inserts, just like a little pizza roller with a little insert in the middle that runs along um, on the each side of this and just pushes pushes the seal, plastic rubber seal black in into place. So that's really easy. I was going to do a YouTube video on how to put it back in, but um, clients wants to do it, so not going to complain. But I've just started demasking this one as well, as you can see. So I'm taking that away from the actual rubber seal. And we've got it completely nice in there as well. I'll do this on this one. You get a definitely a better view. Let's see. See how it's a, it, was, it was a lip in there as well, so I had to, like I said, overlap it. Overlap it over, like that, and then just slowly see how it pushes in behind. And that way you'll keep it nice and paint free. Well, we finished the fly screens now they're pretty much ready to demask and ready for the new screens to go back in it's been primed now first coated raw dry we're ready to go through and do our second on these now and then yeah i'll start going through cleaning up everything leave them for an hour and then we'll go through and demask definitely the most exciting bit but Hey, this is um, also awesome as well. Make sure that you do wear a mask. It is really smelly, this stuff. You can open up some windows or some doors just to get some airflow going through which be also good
We'll go through and give it all a demask, and that's a pretty much wrap. All right, so we are at the point now where we are completely finished up. It's had its prep, primer coat, and its two top coats, and now we've let it sit for a couple of hours. Now we can go through and start demasking everything like that. We'll do that. I've already demasked the two screens. I've already started on this one as well, so we'll just go through. Really quick. And there's that edge there, like I was saying. I'm gonna do, I'll get these top bits off.
All right. So there we have it. We are completely all done now, other than getting the mesh fly screens back in. Like I said, the client's gonna sort that out. He wants to get some new ones and everything like that. So happy days, but this is the finished product. You can see how I've demasked all inside the black tracks now as well. So that's all back original the way it was. Got an absolute beautiful finish on, on here. So that's pretty much it. Beautiful people. We've completely squared up the fixed window and casement, the two screens, plus two sliders in the casement on this one as well. Uh, which is all completely done now. That's a wrap on this, beautiful people. I appreciate you all jumping on and watching, keeping up to date with all our social media, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook. If you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, yeah, gave us the process of how I like to go through and prep from start to finish aluminium doors, uh, sliding doors and the windows. Uh, appreciate you as always. Much love, peace, love and paint. Wow.